Hello everyone! If you're new to my channel, welcome! If you've been subscribed for a while, welcome back! Today I want to talk about confidence in foreign language and I'm pretty sure you guys have had experiences where you weren't that confident. Your mind went blank or you couldn't pronounce a single word. So where does confidence come from? For me, a big part of feeling confident when I speak English or Spanish, for example, is knowing that my pronunciation is great. That when I speak the language, I don't don't need to think about how each individual word is pronounced. So the first thing is you can confidently pronounce all the words. Make sure that you feel confident saying all the sounds of the language you're learning. This is going to help your confidence so freaking much. At least it helped me. Of course, maybe you should have done it at the very beginning of your language learning journey, but if you didn't, don't worry about it. Go through all the sounds that you find challenging and practice them until they become not so challenging anymore. Until you look at this word or look at the sound and you're like, easy, I can pronounce it so freaking easily. I'm gonna share a very interesting story with you guys of how I was struggling so much with this Mexican V or B sound. Like here in Mexico, no one actually calls me Veronica. You know, it's not a Veronica. It's more like Veronica. For me, this sound sounds more like a B, but not exactly. It's definitely not this traditional English V, you know, when I have to do this with my upper teeth, Veronica. It's not like that here at all. And I remember when I first moved to Mexico City and I would say, oh yeah, mi nombre es Veronica. Everyone would be like, uh, Veronica? And I'm like, huh, they're saying something else. Like, yes, it is my name, right? You can understand it. Even if I say Veronica or Veronica, but it just sounds different. And I went on this rabbit hole to try to understand how to pronounce my name correctly, how to pronounce this sound correctly. And at first I sucked like so bad. Every single time I had to introduce myself and it was very often, as you can imagine, I just couldn't say it. Every single time I was saying, mi nombre es Veronica. Veronica, but it's not really correct, right? And so only now I can just comfortably say that mi nombre es Veronica <laughs> and that's it. Now looking back, I know that the main problem for me was the influence of my native language, Russian, because in Russian my name actually sounds like Veronica. It's not Veronica, and the stress is even different, it's Veronica, but it's still V. You know, it's still this V sound, Veronica. So the influence of the Russian language, the influence of the English language too, because in English it's also the same V, Veronica, right? My name is Veronica, Veronica. But in Spanish it's completely different, at least here in Mexico City. The second thing that boosted my confidence like no other is spending time shadowing. I listened to so many recordings of native speakers and I tried to mimic their pronunciation, their intonation, their rhythm, their, you know, everything, their body language, the, the way they move, because I just wanted to sound like them. This technique known as shadowing helps you improve your speaking fluency and your accent. This way you will learn how native speakers connect words together and what sounds they often drop completely. Again, another story from my life. In Mexico it's very common for native speakers to drop the letter S in certain words. And at the beginning, obviously, I didn't know about that. You know, no grammar book is gonna teach me that, oh, by the way, in conversations, this is what's going to happen. For example, if I want to say you have, the grammatically correct version is tienes, the verb tener, to have, and you have to say tienes, right? But a few days ago, I heard a woman in the park say, ¿Por qué tú tienes un perro? Tú tienes. And I was like, huh. Of course, she was talking very fast, right? This is also very important. She wasn't saying, ¿Por qué tú tienes un perro? No, it was more like, ¿Por qué te tiene un perro? 
a lot faster. And recently I have discovered a new way for me to shadow and improve my pronunciation and accent. What I do right now is I'm learning something new, like taking a new class, for example, and shadowing at the same time. And the most recent class I've been taking is the one about Canva. Learn to use Canva, the easy, effective design solution for non-designers. This class is very interesting to me because it taught me so many Canva tricks, like how to create a layout, add text, and share my work. I actually use Canva to create my YouTube thumbnails, and I know that many of you guys might be using it to create presentations at work. I found this class on Skillshare, and it's one of the classes of their learning paths. The learning path is called Become a Canva Expert for Digital Asset Design. Design. If you're new to Skillshare, you absolutely have to give it a try. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, painting, crafting, music, and beyond. If you're not sure where to start, Skillshare has designed learning paths to help you get from novice to pro in no time. Learning paths are hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order that build on one another, reinforcing lessons. They're available in a range of experience levels, from beginner to advanced, in a variety of categories, including design, productivity, creative freelancing, tools and software like Procreate and Blender, marketing and more. And for you guys watching this video, the first 500 people to use the link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Moving on to another interesting thing that boosted my confidence when I had to speak English or Spanish. And this thing is focusing on core phrases. I decided to learn and practice essential phrases and expressions that are commonly used in everyday conversations, such as greetings, introductions, and common questions. I think this is really connected to the Pareto principle I often talk about on this channel. The Pareto principle is like a cool trick that says that you can get most of the results from just a small, part of the effort. It's also called 80-20 rule. Basically, you can learn about 80% of the language by focusing on just 20% of the most important things. This means that you don't have to learn every single word or every single grammar rule to be pretty good at any language. So the way I personally use the Pareto principle is by learning the most common words and phrases first. Every single time I decide to learn a new foreign language, I just open up this table of the most common, like 600 words, and I make sure I memorize all of them with Anki. Then I move on to some expressions that people use very often in their everyday conversations. And then I start focusing on grammar rules that come up a lot in the sentences that I have to use in this language. I still remember when I just came to Mexico two years ago, one of the first things I had to learn was how to say have a good day, que tenga un buen día. And actually, in terms of grammar, this sentence is pretty complicated. In English, we just say, have a good day. It's so easy. But in Spanish, it's a little bit more complicated. And of course, at the very beginning, I did not understand the grammar aspect of this expression. But still, memorizing it helped me so much when I was communicating with Uber drivers, when I was shopping for groceries, or talking to the security guard in my building. Because in those moments, obviously, people use this expression. They say, have a good day, que tengo un buen día, or que tengas un buen and only later I was finally ready to understand the grammar aspect of this expression and why it is so complicated. The next thing that helped me become so much more confident when I speak a foreign language is kind of connected to my work. It's recording myself speaking. I record myself speaking a foreign language all the time because then I listen to the recordings to identify areas for improvement in pronunciation, intonation, and fluency. And this helps me understand where I'm at right now, 
where I was in the past and where I want to go. Like, what's my future goal? Let's compare my current video to a video I posted a year ago. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about reading and specifically about short stories for adults. I know that a lot of you are trying to find the best book or the best collection of short stories to read and that's why I decided to make this video to a video I posted two years ago. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about finding motivation to study English. My first tip is never compare your English to other people's English. Yes, the difference is quite obvious. So you can see that starting this YouTube channel has helped me track my progress in English a lot. And if you're curious if I want to start a YouTube channel in Spanish, I don't think so, because I already have two YouTube channels and too much work. I'm very grateful that my job allows me to have this visual library of my language progress. But you guys can have the exact same thing too, you don't have to be a YouTuber for that. For example, what I do in Spanish, I don't have a YouTube channel in Spanish and I don't want to start a YouTube channel in Spanish, okay? So what I have is I just make little recordings for myself and I save them to a separate folder on my phone. I named it Spanish and all the little videos, you know, like a 10 second video, like a 30 second video where I'm just saying something, I don't know, whatever it is, just talking to myself or maybe answering a question, you know, that I came up with, whatever. It can be anything you want to talk about. The most important thing is that it's something that helps me track my progress because so many people often say that my English is not improving, my Spanish is not improving, what should I do? But then my question is always, are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure it's not improving? Because maybe right now I could tell you, you know, my English is not improving. I feel bad, I feel sad, my English is just not improving. But guys, again, if you watch my videos that I posted two years ago, you will see a huge change. You will see how much I have actually improved. And yes, my English have improved too. And finally, of course, if I want to build my confidence speaking any foreign language, you know what I have to do? I have to speak this language a lot. That's it. <laughs> Pretty simple. But I feel like for a lot of people, it's really hard to understand it. They come up with a lot of excuses like, I'm scared or I don't have enough time or I don't have a teacher, you know, all of those different excuses. But if your goal is to become fluent in English and Spanish and any other foreign language, these excuses are actually holding you back. So like, what is your goal really? Is your goal just coming up with excuses constantly over and over again? Or is your goal achieving something? becoming advanced in this language, becoming fluent in this language, then, you know, you have to break free from your excuses and not use them anymore. So I think it's gonna be it for this video. I really hope you guys liked it. Just a quick reminder that the first 500 people to use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can get started today. The link is in my description and in the pinned comment. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you're thinking about what to watch next, make sure to click right here because I think you will enjoy this video a lot.